Before you start creating your lotion formula, you first need to consider quite a few things. What skin type are you formulating for? Will this be an AM or a PM? moisturizer? What benefits would you like the moisturizer to have for the skin? What do you want the product to feel like on the skin? How will this product be packaged? Who is this product for? Overall cost of materials and what does the final pH of the product need to be? What skin type are you formulating for? For those with dry skin, they may prefer a heavier or thicker moisturizer. Use a good combination of humectants, occlusives, and emollients to help keep their skin from drying out. I personally have dry skin, so I'll be talking from my own personal opinion on this one. Almost kind of feel like I prefer a product that is heavier because it leaves my skin feeling like there's a product on it and it feels nice and moisturized and hydrated. And I really don't mind if it takes a while to rub in because I feel like it's actually being applied to my skin and not just being instantly absorbed into my skin like some moisturizers I have tried. Now, of course, I don't want it to be like sunscreen type of vibe where it takes forever to rub in, but I don't mind it taking a little bit to rub in. So picking ingredients that might take a little bit longer to absorb in the skin might be a good idea for people with dry skin. I also really like using butters in my face moisturizers, but again, this might be too much for someone with oily skin. Now someone else with dry skin might have a whole different opinion. And this is where the category, who are you making your moisturizer for comes in. And we'll talk about that category a little bit later. Those with oily skin, they might want a more lightweight moisturizer. Gel creams overall are most popular for the skin type. So let me know if you guys wanna see a whole video on gel creams. And again, make sure you're using humectants, emollients, and occlusives, even for those with oily skin. But you do wanna stick with ones that feel more non-existent on the skin. For example, petroleum jelly probably is not a good option here, but something like caprolic capric triglyceride or squalane would be perfect here. Overall, quick absorption time is probably the most important for moisturizers for oily skin. When it comes to emollients, you want to stick with lightweight, quick absorbing emollients like caprolic capric triglyceride and squalane. Those are also emollients and occlusives. When it comes to choosing plant oils, you might wanna choose plant oils that are high in linoleic acid because those with oily skin have actually been found to have low amounts of linoleic acid. So this would be oils like safflower oil, grapeseed oil, hemp seed oil, but other oils like jojoba oil this oil is extremely similar to our skin's natural sebum, so this would also be a good option. But for those of you who want to stick with oil-free moisturizers, which typically people with oily skin do tend to lean towards those, you'll wanna reach for your emollient esters like caprolic, capric triglyceride, squalane, C12-15 alkyl benzoates, isopropyl myristate, I can never pronounce this, it goes by IPM also, cocoa caprolates slash caprates and ethyl hexyl palmitates. These are all what I like to describe as oil-free oils. They are oil soluble, but they are so much more lightweight on the skin compared to plant oils. And these are what is used as an emollient or occlusive in these oil-free moisturizers. Typically those with oily skin actually have dehydrated skin. So this is why humectants also are important. Those with oily skin like to dry out their skin because they're just sick of all the oils and that's how they become dehydrated. Those with combination skin tend to have a lot of the same needs as those with oily skin. So sticking with lightweight emollients and occlusives would be your best bets. And typically, again, I see gel creams being the most popular for combination skin. Now for those with normal skin, I kind of think this is where it comes down to who are you formulating for because someone with normal skin could really go in all kinds of different directions here. Some people can have normal skin, but be more on like the drier side and like heavier products. Some people with normal skin can tend to be more oily and they lean towards like those gel creams and lightweight moisturizers. So again, this comes down to who are you 
formulating for. Also, the climate can come into play. My overall best advice if you're formulating for normal skin is to just do a good blend of humectants, emollients, and occlusives that are lightweight. Use things that are like similar to our skin's natural sebum like jojoba oil, squalane is a really good one, caprolic capric triglyceride. Keep it more on the lighter side, but you could do something in between the dry type of skin moisturizer and the oily skin type of moisturizer. Those with sensitive skin. So when it comes to sensitive skin, it might be best to stick with like minimal ingredients in the moisturizer. That way, if a reaction does happen, it's easier to figure out what ingredient could be causing it. Now, I don't always necessarily think that just because a product has less ingredients, it makes it less likely to cause a reaction. But when it comes to just formulating at home, if you do have sensitive skin, use minimal ingredients so you can figure out what ingredient that is that's causing the reaction. It's also probably a good idea to stay away from things like plant extracts because I know a lot of people love the natural ingredients, but natural ingredients are actually more likely to cause these allergic reactions for people with sensitive skin. So for those with mature skin, they might be looking for ingredients like hyaluronic acid, collagen, retinoids, niacinamide, ceramide, vitamin C, vitamin E, alpha hydroxy acids, ingredients to minimize the appearance of pores or fine lines. Of course, you cannot use, you know, anti-aging and stuff like that as marketing terms. I just want to mention that if you are selling product because then you're getting into like curing and treating skin issues, which I could make a whole other video on that topic. But anyways, the list goes on and on. Um, some of these are a bit more advanced to work with these ingredients that I've named off. So I'm not going to get into all of that, but those with mature skin are typically looking for those types of ingredients in their products. Mature skin does typically prefer a heavier moisturizer. And I say this because as we age, our skin does lose the ability to hold on to moisture. So generally speaking, those with mature skin do like heavier, more moisturizing products. Will this be an AM or PM moisturizer? AM moisturizers tend to be more lightweight and they're packed with ingredients like antioxidants, vitamin C, vitamin E, niacinamide. Overall, you want to avoid ingredients that cause sun sensitivity, things like alpha hydroxy acids, lactic acid, glycolic acid, retinoids, salicylic acid, and AM moisturizers sometimes will contain SPF, but home crafters, we shouldn't be formulating SPFs because those are regulated by the FDA, so they need FDA approval. And it's not smart to mess around with people's sun protection because if you are formulating something that's an SPF and it hasn't actually been lab tested to prove that it's that SPF level, you could cause a lot of damage on somebody's skin. So I don't recommend formulating SPFs at home. And if you are selling SPF products, they have to be FDA approved. And one more thing to consider with AM moisturizers, these are typically used under makeup. So you also want to consider the fact that makeup's gonna go over top of them. PM moisturizers tend to be heavier and they contain skin renewing ingredients like retinoids and lots of occlusives. They also may contain ingredients like AHAs or BHAs, so lactic acid, glycolic acid, salicylic acid. Ingredients that typically cause sun sensitivity are found in PM moisturizers, but basically overall PM moisturizers contain all of those really expensive ingredients that most of us are wanting in our skincare routine. And PM moisturizers, you don't have to worry about sun protection or the fact that makeup's gonna go over top. What benefits would you like your product to have on the skin? Are there specific skin concerns you're trying to target with your moisturizer? We already talked about like dry skin, oily skin, mature skin, stuff like that. But for this category, I'm specifically talking about treating concerns like maybe dark spots and overall like evening the complexion of your skin, things like that. Is that something you want to have your moisturizer offer? Those are things to consider here. What do you want the product to feel like on the skin? This is called the sensory feel. 
No matter what skin type you are formulating for, the final sensory feel is definitely something that you make sure you want to consider. Say you do formulate a gel cream with lots of ingredients that you love, but how does it actually perform when you put it on the skin? Does it cause pilling? Or that awesome heavy moisturizer that you created for dry skin with like ceramides and peptides? It might have all these lovely ingredients, but when you put it on your skin, how does it feel? Just because a moisturizer is packed with lots of lovely ingredients, if it does not feel good on your skin when you use it, you are never going to reach for that moisturizer. How will this product be packaged? Really important thing to also consider is how do you want to package this moisturizer? If you want it to go in a pump bottle, then you might need to formulate a thinner moisturizer. But if it's going in a jar, you can make it thicker. If you are using ingredients like vitamin C that are light sensitive, you need to use a dark container. That way UV is not getting into it. The final packaging of your product can really make or break your product. If you are selling online, you might want to package your product in plastic instead of glass because it's cheaper to ship and also less likely to get damaged during transit. So there's so many things you need to consider when it comes to packaging for your product. Who is this product for? Again, I feel like this overlaps with the skin types. Again, just because someone has dry skin, it doesn't necessarily mean they're gonna like a heavier product they might like something more lightweight. Maybe they are younger and they definitely don't need ingredients like retinoids yet. Is this person extremely picky about the final sensory feel of their product? Do they not like sticking their hands in jars? Overall, your target audience or specific person for that moisturizer should be kept in mind during the entire formulating process. Cost of materials. Probably is only most important to those of you who are selling your product. And if you are selling your product, you want to keep in mind the final cost of your product during the entire creating process of your moisturizer. Now, of course, you don't wanna cheap out and just get all of the cheaper ingredients causing your product to not perform at its best, but also it's worth trying that cheaper emulsifier to see if it works just as well or maybe even better. Or for example, glycerin has been shown to be just as hydrating as hyaluronic acid. So instead of reaching for hyaluronic acid, you could use glycerin or if you do use hyaluronic acid, make sure you use that ingredient as a marketing term for your moisturizer, put it on like the outside of the bottle or something, show off that it has hyaluronic acid in there since that is such a uh, seeked out ingredient and people know what it is. Also remember more is not always better. So if you have an ingredient that you really, really love, using it at a higher percentage doesn't always result in better results. So make sure you're using a percentage where it's not breaking the bank, but you are still getting the benefits from it and you're not just like adding in just like a little dash of it for marketing. Just make sure you are still making quality products but keeping the final cost in mind. Also, you wanna check with different suppliers to see if maybe they sell an ingredient for cheaper. And also, you want to take into consideration your shipping cost for all the ingredients you buy as well. So if you're charged like $30 for shipping, make sure you put that shipping cost in with the amount of the uh, price for your ingredients. I actually have a video that talks all about how to calculate uh, the cost of your materials, like your individual ingredients. So I'll link that video down below. And I also have a video that helps you come up with a price for your products as well. So I'll have that one linked down below. And lastly, you want to consider the pH of your products. So pH is super, super important when it comes to formulating. So if you do not know anything about pH, I do have a video all about that. Again, it's linked down below. It's just way too much to explain in this video. Essentially, our skin's natural pH is between 4.5 to 5.5. So most products we make, you want to have somewhere in between that pH level but there are certain ingredients like niacinamide that need to be in a pH of six. So make sure you are reading the formulating guidelines to all of your ingredients to see if there's a specific pH level that that ingredient needs to be in. And make sure your product's final pH is within that pH level and make sure you aren't using ingredients that clash. Like you can't use niacinamide that needs to be in a pH of six with something like lactic acid that needs to be in a lower pH level, like 
four. Those just won't work together. So pH is super, super important to consider when you are creating your formula. So these are just things that I am thinking of currently as I am making this video. There's probably so many other things that you need to consider when creating your lotion formula. Let me know if I left anything out in the comments and come back for my next video where I show you guys how to write the perfect lotion formula. Don't forget to go over and check me out over on Patreon where I post two bonus videos every single month. So there is so much content that you guys can go binge watch over there just for $5 a month. And for $10 a month, you can get a small business shout out. So let's shout out the small businesses. Nature's Farm Girl, thank you so much. Also, everybody's links will be in the description box. Let's blend, hempygirl.com, thank you. Seventh House and Oak on Etsy, at Black Petal Beauty on Instagram, Owl and Lily on Etsy, Zayalamore.com. I hope I said that right. EmbraceBeautyEssentials.com at Stardust Bath and Body on Instagram. And that is it. Thank you so much. If you would like a small business shout out, go over to my Patreon.